um, I came in to be a part of the Planet Hollywoods. Right. So, yeah, and, and I am a huge Arnold fan anyway. I mean, I'm just like, he is my idol. I mean, he's like, I've never even met him. I've never met Arnold. And um, my sister has met his wife on an airplane. Okay. And, and she, when he was governor. So the governor sent us a, a, a beautiful letter saying, I'll be back and, you know, and thank you for my great stuff. And, and he does wear our jackets outside of um, movies. Fascinating. Yeah, he's always done that. So. Well, well I know the Terminators, uh, you, you were just telling me offline how people cold call you, you do interviews all the time, but for, for our listeners and our watchers, could you just tell us about what you know from the Terminator, the jacket, that you that you provided right well of course terminator was done and uh the original terminator was what 1984 and so t1 came so arnold comes say let's just say arnold comes to this country arnold knows of us already before he gets here right and he tells him to come to us to do this film they were doing the film and that's when he was first starting out of course he got famous doing that right um that the t1 jacket is just a standard jacket of ours the highway it was manager. a standard jacket of ours with a hard kidney belt in the back. Uh, your standard police jacket is what it was. And very, very simple. And we did a, a rigid back in it. And, and I, that's my favorite. I like T1 jacket because it's just, it's just black, shiny, and cool. Yeah. You know, T2, I make a lot of those jackets. I mean, those jackets are in excess of $2,800, like $2,900 or something. And every pattern with the, his jacket is made from his pattern. Okay. I don't make standard sizes in that product at all. And, and the police jackets, no. They have to be custom made or we're not going to do it. Okay. And are there archives and records of these orders and like of the, of the purchases that were made by the costume department? Are they on file with you guys? Um, yeah, I believe they're, they are uh, for, for one and two. And then I did the design work on three. So that was my design work. It says it on film jackets, but I, it's not right. It's not actually right. He right. actually wore the one I designed in the movie because I made it for him. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I'll, I'm good. yeah. So he actually wore the one that we made. And then we had run off to Daytona. So we couldn't do mass production of them at that time. That's really what happened there. Right. But and I knew, I know what Arnold likes. I'm so well aware of what he likes. And being his one of his biggest fans is it makes it easier for me to design his products and that must be fantastic being not yeah. a fan but being you know someone that makes the garments for them i mean that must be a story it's actually I, quite fun i would dine out on that story every day <laughs> yeah i mean and we did and we and we do it all the time still and i think what you'll find with us is we're more humble than anything we don't we're not braggarts we we show things off on instagram I mean, if anybody follows us on Instagram, then you'll see all the, I mean, that's me posting all that. I'm, I do all that. And I just have fun doing it. And it's, it's fun. Every time we make a new product, oh, look what we did today. Uh, <laughs> yee. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. I, I, it's, it's like, great. wee. <laughs> Free willy. <laughs> and, and moving on to Terminator 2, Dana, can you remember what it was like when you joined? So this is like, during the production, you're making some for Arnold pre-production. How many were made and what was the process? There like? were, for Terminator 2, so there were 50 sets. So you have sets for Stunt, you have sets for Arnold, and then Arnold only needed uh, two or three different sets. Well, the one, the jacket I have here, which I do have, one of, I have the movie jacket here in our store. And wow. yeah, it's pretty cool. You wanna see it? Please, absolutely. Yeah, let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. This is fascinating. I'm here by myself today. I work. I usually work on Saturdays. So. Oh, bless you for coming in. Oh my God, we're so short-handed. I mean, the government, our government, likes to hand everybody money and tell them not to go to work. <laughs> and what is the situation? Are you guys opening up soon? Or is it... We're open. We are absolutely open, and we've been open for through the whole thing. We just can't get people to work. Right. Yeah. Me too. There it is. Wow. And so that was one of the heroes. He won. Wow. This is not the one that was worn in the movie, but this is. That's uh, the model of it. That's the model. This is yep. the exact model, as a matter of fact. Right. Okay. That is a thing of beauty. No this... changes were ever made to this jacket. None. T2, things changed a lot. I mean, you've got like bullet packs. 
and all the explosion packs that fit into the back of the jacket. This is totally different than any jacket we ever make. Look at that. that it incredible. takes forever just to pattern this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Pattern this jacket. So. And so this was a jacket that was used during the film and then was given. Yeah, this was his. Production. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, incredible. this was his. You can see all the, all the, uh, the, the spatters. Yeah, look at the deterioration on that. That is beautiful. So the cool thing about this is, is the way they designed this film. So I talked to his assistant. His assistant for that movie was Greg. And that was Arnold's personal assistant. So right. with right. him, so he tells me they got out to the desert out at Barstow and Bakersfield, and they were just dragging that thing in the dirt. I mean, they were just dragging it. Wow. They were blowing things up. They were throwing in the cement mixer. They were sanding it with a DA, and, you know, they were just hitting it with a DA sander, and they had to do it to 50 of these. But Arnold's, they do special stuff with Arnold's. Everything is, like, perfect with Arnold's. Right. N nothing, yeah, there is you know, no mistakes on Arnold's. It was meant to look exactly like that. Okay, so this is purpose made, purpose built, and then all the others have varying degrees of deterioration. But this exactly, it's always going to look the same. And it's for different if it's for different uh, stages of the movie. So, like you've got the first one when you know, like in T one when they take it off the biker, and then in the next film when he's been shot fifty times, and then the next stage yeah. where he's slid on the ground, and right. you know, and so all of those are all different stages. And each and every movie is done basically the same way. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating. I didn't expect to see the jacket there in your store. That's, yeah, that's no, incredible. no, of course I have it. I have a lot of stuff. I have a showroom. I have his head in the corner. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, wow. And right next to the uh, Arnold's head Hunger Games boots. <laughs> see the boot hanging on the wall? I got them, yeah. Look at those. Yeah, that's from the Hunger Games. Nice. We did uh, one and two. For them. Right. Okay. I yeah. So, of it's sixty pairs of boots for each each one. And for all the peacekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. That is a that is a gig. Um, yeah. So. Uh, with regards to the sorry, just getting back to the the T two jacket. The T two. Did they mm -hmm. come to you with any specific designs, or did you go to them with some ideas? Can you can you? Remember? They will come and let me grab some stuff. I think that will interest you quite a bit. Maybe. I have my. This is great. Okay, so this is what they came to with me, and this is for three. But I'm sorry okay. about you two, but sure. One. Wow! Look at that. This is what they came to me with for for T three. Uh huh. And so and they see, give me, right. These okay. are just stupid. The mm. looks of them are just stupid. But the drawing's beautiful. <laughs> it looks very beautiful. kind of fashionable, doesn't it? In the, like the yeah, and then you got pants. These were his pants. Uh huh. And then that one. Arnold is not, is not by any means a striped guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's nothing. So, so these you're talking are about like ones. you're talking about like racing stripes along the sleeve there. Yeah, they put racing stripes on the sleeve. So these were choices. Right. And then they, um, and then I told him which one he was going to pick. So I made, I actually made all of these. And I made which, all of these jackets. Yeah. And how much influence is Arnold having over this? Does he get the final say? Or he any has, of... it's just a matter of what he picks. Right. So and bottom line is they have a certain look that they want him to look like. And then he picks the toughest looking jacket. I know he picks. I know he's got a lot to say about it. You just know where Arnold's thinking when he's wearing it on what is right for him. Yeah. And he'll pick what's comfortable and what's, you know, right. The whole shebang. So. Right. Okay. He's got a lot to say about what he wears. That's fascinating. And yeah. how, how many people call you up uh, just to order the, I mean, how popular are these jackets for you now online? How many They're pretty you? popular. So for people that can afford them, mm. they sell. I mean, we have a year waiting list for them. <laughs> yeah but, i mean what people might not know is that you were telling me also offline that you're a relatively small family run business so absolutely so this is not like a mass production no big we don't mass production. produce anything um we used to we used to but when you know i mean if you think of things back in in those times that there wasn't a lot of people like us around now there's nobody like us around right right but what is around 
is people that make leather jackets. Uh, and they just you... make a, a ton of them. They come over from China. They come everywhere. And I absolutely will not do business with China at all. Right. I will not. No, I, I feel, and it doesn't have anything to do with the virus. It has everything to do with cheap, poor quality, and just crappy construction, period. It's just crappy. And what, I hate those guys. What is your, I feel like I, this might be a loaded question, but what are your, your thoughts on the on websites like the aforementioned film jackets and places that will kind of do these special movie produced jackets when there's already people like you that do the original and make the original? Mm -hmm. They do them. I mean, everybody's got to make money somewhere, you know, and if that's all they're doing, those people are probably, you know, you know, garage manufacturers or, you know, somebody who hasn't been in business that long, or they'll just find different people to make them all the time. Right. You know, and China is a big offender. China, um, Korea, all those people, Taiwan, Taiwan is probably one of the worst offenders about replicating um, other people's uh, products absolutely right. and putting the Bates name on them that's that's nasty but yeah it happens all the time but I let the our Japan affiliate deal with that okay it's up to him to do, to deal with that and get people to stop doing it right okay well that's I mean that must be a full-time gig for him right because <laughs> it's 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 pretty rough yeah it but, is what it is I what mean, else can you do I mean it, look I've I've interviewed we've got friends of the show that do things like uh, the Indiana Jones jackets or kind of special made to order. There's right. Magnoli Clovis that we've, we've had on the show before. And I think there's a line where I kind of like it when they do stuff, when other people can't access it or the brands aren't producing them anymore. You know, like Tom Ford might not be doing the, the, the clothes for James Bond in a capsule collection anymore, but there are people that can reproduce those clothes seen in say Spectre or Skyfall. So, I've got time yeah. for that. I think when it crosses the line is when there are already brands still making these jackets. Correct. You know, um, and there's other people that are undercutting them using images on their site, et cetera. So there's, there's obviously- That happens to us. That happens to us with a lot of things. A lot of our products that happens with, because uh, prior to a leather manufacturer, we were a, an accessories company. Right. So we made hard parts for motorcycles. You can see did that you not on the know site. That? I did, yeah, on the site. I saw the saddles and obviously the, the suits as well. That you know, There you was know. so much more. Yeah. There was so much more. There's uh, uh, mirrors, handlebars, uh, foot peg rubbers. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with those. Right. Our mold was stolen and then I found it and I went and brought it home. But uh, that doesn't mean people aren't upset. So um, we, yeah. a lot of things hit the internet. And then when one person does it, then it gets to some guy that's bad over here and China does it. And then they bring it in over here. And so you have to find a way to stop these people at the border. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you can tell me about any other films that I may have missed. I mean, I got in touch with you uh, regarding The Usual Suspects. Because Stephen Baldwin was a judge. I was, you know, I, I was jotting them down. I was jotting them down a bit ago, and before I sat down, I was going to sit down and sew for a bit. So <laughs> I love this. We tool. are working people here. We are yeah. working. Yeah, we, everybody works here, and we all do two or three different things. So, um, so uh, you know, have you seen the Progressive commercials? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, Progressive motorcycle. No. Like slow. No, you guys don't know you progressive insurance. I, well, it might be just me, but I'm sure you might look at that. But yeah. it's really popular over here in the states. Very, okay. very popular commercial, and and we do them. They're very funny commercials, and so and we do their whole team have done those guys for years. If you want to go back really far, like into the the early '80s, you've got uh, the show Chips. Oh, okay. We were in that constantly. Uh, motorcycle pants. Ah. Stuff like that. Their jackets. Yeah, their motorcycle jackets and stuff like that. So you got X-Men 2, of course. Mm -hmm. and that was that was a big one. We sell a lot of those jackets. And then let me see. Uh, Nicolas Cage wears our stuff. Oh. Starsky and Hutch. That was a uh -huh. film. Yeah. So if you watch that film that where Starsky and Hutch, um, uh, they reproduced it with, uh, what's that guy's name? You know, Owen Wilson? Yeah, Ben Stiller. Yeah, Ben Stiller. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and then Harley Davidson, The Marble Man, Torque, um, all kinds of movies. I mean, and there's movies that we don't even know about, like Strip Tease. Right, okay. With okay. Demi Moore. Yeah, you yeah. see the jacket there. That's actually an ABC jacket, and we are actually ABC as well. Oh, fascinating. That's yeah, fascinating. we bought them out in 1980. We bought the leather portion of their business out. I do love uh, strip tees. I think that was really underrated. Bert yeah, you know, that, that was hilarious. Crack jacket she's wearing, yeah. And when Bert Reynolds is walking around in her shoes, and he, <laughs> right. she exactly. looks good. <laughs> that's so good. I miss him. I miss him. Yeah, Bert. that's funny. And then you know, there's a bunch of offbeat stuff that that never really becomes anything. You know, like the movie I, I wrote down here, the movie Torque. Right. Torque yeah. was the the effects were great. It's just their dialogue had a problem. Right. So, and, and it probably didn't go anywhere because of that, because it was kind of silly, but the motorcycle stuff was very, it was good. I liked it. I but liked it, all the stuff. It, it finds a home though. I mean, it's like now with Somehow streaming, I mean, you'd like, I've, I've got Amazon Prime and Netflix here and I feel like I could watch Nicolas Cage at any moment of the day, you know, right. because he's, he's done films that I haven't heard of and he's kind of just doing them so prolifically that they just keep on coming up exactly exactly mm -hmm. we've done we did batman and robin and oh, really? we did uh, uh alicia silverstone in that uh, the green jacket yeah i actually okay. made myself a pair of pants out of that out of that leather oh fantastic so, yeah it was really comfortable leather too but um yeah it's like a green aged leather type stuff and then chris o'donnell we uh -huh. made his jacket as well oh wow little robin yeah, yeah. That's yeah, we did a couple of different things in, in the first two or three movies. And what would you say are the, like, the most, like, I mean, it, it costs about two and a half, nearly three grand to buy a T2 jacket, but like right. the original props now, I mean, like one of 50, even the one that you have upstairs, how much would you say something like that would actually go for at auction now? The jacket upstairs? Yeah. Oh, six figures. Easy. Easily, right? Oh, easily. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Yeah, I mean, I have several suits upstairs. Like, I have the original Bones uh, skeleton suit uh, uh -huh. from David Albana in 1970. And, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that was the biggest upset at the Houston Astrodome. I have the jacket over here. Let me get it for you. <laughs> We're using it to make a, a replica. Uh-huh. This is great. Look at all those patterns as well behind you. Those wooden cutaways are the patterns, I'm guessing the leather jackets and the backs and the fronts oh wow look at that that's incredible yeah that is the original so that's this, like a this a is rib. the most copied jacket around huh the only thing missing is those right on okay. there on the other guy and look at that yeah it's got it on the back. yeah and there's absolutely pants to go with it fantastic to do it but at the houston astrodome that was the biggest upset in racing history, they just, they swore you had to wear black leathers, couldn't find it in the rule book, so they allowed to let him race. <laughs> there it yeah, is. it was really, uh, I got that straight from him when I saw him and I got it back. I was at a, um, I was at a flat track race and he goes, what will it take for me to give a new suit? And I said, just give me that old one. Yeah, yeah. and he took it. I got the better end of that deal. <laughs> wow. Uh, are you a collector as well, Dana, or are these just- I do, I yeah. do. I collect, actually, I collect sewing machines. You do? Oh, and, and I collect, I collect Bates stuff. Uh huh. Anything Bates I collect. I'll go to swap meets and, you know, I'm a searcher of things, uh, of things Bates. Because when we took over in 86, they left us with absolutely nothing. Right, Except okay. what we had, like the T2 and all that. That got left with the business. And, you know, it just, we had nothing to continue the legacy. And, you know, it was so much that, and I had been here, probably about 10 years when I decided that it's like, we got to keep this alive. We got to keep this going. We got to keep doing this. Yeah. And this is like, oh yeah, we got to do the seats. We got to do the seats. We're going to bring the seats, you know, and I'm an upholsterer by trade. So I should automatically be doing that. Yeah. I started uh, remaking all of the seats that we made back in the thirties and forties and fifties. So any, any for the Indian Scouts or anything like that. And so, and then I federally trademarked all of the stuff. So, right. and so, so yeah, I'm quite busy with attorneys and whatnot after that, but I try <laughs> to get some work done here. That's why I have to work all the time. And my sister does too. She, she works on Saturdays as well. 
And do you find it's hard to bring the next generation through, the, like the seamstresses, the people to train up? I mean, yes. what's, what's the situation oh now like? I mean, how's the business going to follow find, them? I find working with millennials makes me want to throw up. <laughs> Um, I have to, the people I have to hire are over 30. Uh -huh. Honestly, I mean, I really do because it just, they seem to be, people like that seem to be more mature, more focused, set in their ways, know what has to be done, and they have a good work ethic. And if they don't, they don't stay for very long. But right. recently, our, the problem has been, and I've never had this problem before. That's how I know it's due to COVID. Right. And, and when the government pays you money, like when Biden went into office and he pays these people money to stay home. That's what he's doing. That's what the Democratic Party is doing. And I'm a Republican. I didn't like our last president, but <laughs> he kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> I was waiting for the, you know, that little red button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably under yeah, the I was a little nervous he was going to do that. <laughs> but don't get me into politics right now. But that, that was upsetting to me to know that, you know, People aren't going back to work because you're paying them. Yeah. Yeah. So, not and, and, yeah. and I know other countries are not doing this. I, oh. I know that. And, you know, I don't know if y'all got paid for staying home or not, but. Mm. Well, uh, yeah. many countries are, many countries aren't. I mean, there, I mean, we in the UK, there's a furlough scheme that's been rolled out for, I feel like, the last year. Um, yeah. But kind yeah of, well, we had furlough, but they don't, they shouldn't have given them any extra money. Right, yeah. I don't think, yeah, and it's that doesn't come from somebody with money. I'm I'm no richer than the next guy, you know. Everybody, if you if you're not going to work, collect unemployment, mm. but go to work. But you know, try to go to work. Do you train people there though? So I mean, like, tra yeah. like millennials are hard, but I mean, like, I'll give you an example. I, I started learning how to sew late late thirties, and I just mm -hmm. found it so hard. I mean, people don't appreciate, I think, how really hard it is. I mean, that's why. I, like if you're a Savile Row tailor, for example, you need to get in real young because if you want to become like a, a, a pattern maker at the age of 39, then you, you've got your work cut out. You just don't have yeah. the brain sponge. I, yeah, you know, I've never had any stuff. schooling to do any of that. So you need never it so went you're to young school. Though, right? I mean, I did go to school a little bit, but I mean, for me, what happened, I, I've been sewing since I was 16. And I was kind of a derelict in high school and I had to make up some credits so I could graduate so i just took this extra credit and i so oh I, I could probably do that mm. so and thank god i was talented and and creative enough to be able to pick things up quickly and i've been very lucky and very blessed for that to happen right but um i, I just went to school and i realized that i could make money at it it's like oh cool yeah this is yeah. what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start doing 57 chevys and doing like really cool stuff and you know and that's what i did and when I got here, I was over 30 when I got here. And I didn't know how to do clothes when I got here. I had no idea. Uh -huh. I had to learn. And I, so I watched, looked, listened, and then I did it. And I was trained by the best, which is a Bates seamstress. And we just recently lost, in the past few years, lost our head seamstress of 40 years. Mm. Yeah, she passed away. And it wasn't from COVID, but it was, it was in 18, 2018. Well, I'm pleased that people like you, Dana, are carrying on the legacy for these companies. Can people come see you? Are you kind of like an open shop in terms of? Opening? Yeah, no, I have a showroom and uh, we just ask that you make an appointment with us. Mm -hmm. And then people. Can and let down. us know that we won't check out on you. Yeah. And yeah, because Dawn does races and she'll go to races and then I'm either here, but nobody knows what our, our lunchtime hours and stuff are. Sometimes people might show up when we're not here. So, yeah. We just ask that appointments made, and then we like to know who's coming in because sometimes we get some crazy people around here. Do you get people that just want to come in and see the jacket? They, yeah, <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> well, I mean, who can play? Oh, but... <laughs> Terminator! Ah, Terminator! Yeah. yeah. Let, let me touch it. Let me. Let me. Get yeah, it yeah, yeah. And then I put it on them and take a picture, and they just go like, "Oh!" <gasps> <laughs> to me, it's old news. But I mean, to somebody just coming in here, wanting their picture taken, and and it's like, "Oh my gosh!" Like. The guy that I just made a jacket for the progressive commercial was here uh -huh. and he, uh, his name's Alan in the, in the commercial, but his name's really Paul. And so he did that. And I said, do you want to put it on? Let's, let's put it on. I'll take some video of you. And it was cool. He had his fitting here with his, with his stylist and 
Oh, that's it, so cool. Yeah, he was just over the moon. Well, you can sell tickets for that. I can't. Well. Yeah, but I can't. I can't put it up until the commercial airs, and the commercial hasn't aired yet. So <laughs> that's I'm why talking... I can't do that. Because oh, you can't do that until you know until it comes out. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll wait. But in which general, will be another few months. In general, you could just put like. 10 bucks on the door to touch it and then like you exactly. still get a queue around the block <laughs> yeah here's the envelope put it in slide it through the slide <laughs> we'll give you a key then come back <laughs> you'll have you'll have bounces on the stairwell there you know it, it's, right right <laughs> um what about the the later terminator movies dana were there any conversations like with dark fate and genesis and and that lot were they coming to you for um that? t4 uh, salvation mm. that was the last one we did with salvation so you did and the, you and did that salvation. is a mixture that was probably harder than making any of the rest of the jackets uh -huh. salvation was the hardest because they took like four jackets and made one jacket out of it <laughs> okay yeah that, that's how they did that because it's like all it looks like it's all in pieces right you know and, and i didn't even watch the movie i didn't think it was i'm a fan but i'm not that big of a fan yeah like salvation i didn't really get into it I don't think I'm only a fan of like one it. and two. Yeah. One and two, that's it. That's all you're going to get me for. I think you'll like the last one, though, Dark Fate, because they, they do this thing where they cut out all the middle ones and they say, right, we're just going to follow on from the second one and we'll forget that three, four, five. I, I think they just right. said, look, because it's Cameron. I sold them back. a bunch of jackets for that one for five because it was, uh, they did everything in Louisiana and Louisiana was trying to rebuild from Katrina and they offered uh, big breaks for them to do it there and to make the products there and to use their people right. to make the products. That's why that one got made in Louisiana because they came here okay. and wanted us to do things. She says, but we can't because they give a, uh, like it's like 11% or something that they gave them hmm. on, the, on the tax breaks and everything like that. And then therefore all the, the costumers made a lot more money on the deal they did come here and buy some of these old jackets that we got from japan uh -huh. that we didn't sell anymore they just bought a bunch of them to right. use in the movie okay and, and this is yeah and this they're all old Bates jackets they probably restyled them somehow and took patches off and because i know they don't like to imprint like when we do a movie with anything having to do with terminators or anything like that uh, labeling is not allowed right so and you'll see that so if they set comes to us and says, hey, this is what we want to do. We already know right off the top, and I've known this for years, that no labeling. We can put labels on the inside, that's it. Nothing yep. more. Yep. They don't want any of that extra stuff. Right. You get, we're in the credits, I think, in the credits as far as uh, the, the jackets and stuff. Yeah. And I've uh, never stopped looking thanks. because it goes by so fast, my brain yeah. didn't work that. <laughs> you know, I'm a slow thinker. So, well, even things like that are hard to get these days. I was speaking to right, which right. But if you see our name on it, if mm. you see our name on it, then you'll know that they've picked it up somewhere. Like the one in Usual Suspects. So the Bates badge exactly is on there. Yeah, yeah. Because I was here when that movie was made. Right. And and I was not even privy to that. And did they? So, come but to I you do to know it, it was there. Or was it just kind of off the peg? Did they just buy it, pick it up somewhere? I think they probably, they could have got it off eBay. They could have got it from a yard sale. Yeah. Back then in 1996, I mean, you could have picked up one of our jackets for a lot less money, but now super pricey. Right. But That's I mean, very pricey on eBay, very pricey. They, they didn't I like that. That's good. It keeps us, you know. Oh, well, you're, you're a premium. Because, you're a luxury Yeah, brand. because you're paying us just for a regular jacket or something for, and it, and it goes from, from start to finish, it takes time. It could take as long as six, eight months to get products from us because you know what? And I tell them right off the bat, we do not hurry for anybody. Right. We just don't. We might drop everything for you, but we don't hurry for you. Which must be and that's tough, true. tough for them because I guess like with film production, they want everything turned around super quick, right? So Right. And they, I do drop it. Yeah. I don't hurry, but I drop everything. Yeah. And I'll, it's, if I know it's coming, I will block as part of my schedule out because I know how long it takes to make things there. Yeah. And I will block part of my schedule out for that. And usually they're just one or two offs. Uh -huh. One, maybe two. Yeah, of course. Dana, I feel like I could talk to you for hours. 
Thank you so we much. We can. For, I can talk about this topic all day long. Thank you so much for taking time out on a Saturday during work um, to, to walk me through the garage and show me all the stuff and give me the history. It's been a real treat for me. And, My pleasure. And people can find you at BatesLevers.com online and Absolutely. follow the journey on Instagram. I will leave all the links over on the show notes so people can find you there. But uh, in the meantime... And if you give me the link to your show, I would like to start listening. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Be I'll, I'll, I'll send a link straight after the call. Yeah. I've got yeah, a... I guess, you know, I like to have something in my ear all day long. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll see what <laughs> I can do about that. Um, I'm about to jump on a call to talk to the costume designer from Austin Powers. So I've got to do a, a free hour oh, phone nice. call about Austin Powers, which is great. Nice. It will, um, Beautiful. It will take up the rest of my night. But in the meantime, enjoy. Thanks so much, Dana. Uh -huh, my pleasure. pleasure. Take care. Bye bye now.